what's going on what's going on what is going on <laughs> just getting off the road uh by the way this is terrell hall of fame d Lai, and all that good stuff uh voice probably a little beat up just getting off the road for a day <laughs> but um this video i have a lot of questions about breeding breeding how to put together a breeding and i'm gonna tell you this if you're gonna put together a breeding you should start not just with finding a dog that you like but you have to do the proper research on that dog because no matter what you think about this dog or whatever you're still breeding pedigrees and a lot of the mistakes that i'm seeing people make is that they continuously i mean over and over and over again these people continuously pick uh pick a dog just based off of what this dog looks like you know uh up front well, the problem is, is that you have certain dogs that'll come out of certain litters that are very inconsistent, even to their litter or their bloodline. And some of those are the dogs that we like. So if you end up picking a dog that's inconsistent to his bloodline, then we're gonna have a problem. And the reason why we're gonna have a problem with that is that, you know, when you do your breeding, say this dog comes off of a pocket line, a shorter dog, and he's a big dog and you like his bigness, <laughs> you like everything that comes with the bigness, then what's gonna, uh, basically is gonna happen is, is that, what's going on, lady? What's gonna happen is, is that you're gonna run into a situation that's pretty much uh, mm, not so good because if you were aiming for the characteristics of this big dog, you're gonna get small dogs a lot, in a lot of cases. He might throw himself sometimes, but you're gonna breed his pedigree more than you're gonna breed him. A lot of people are just looking at the dog up front, and the best thing to do is take your time, look at um, his productions and what he's been doing with other bloods and bitches of similar size to yours. And then also, you know, like I say, learn that pedigree very, very well, you know, because second mistake is, is that a lot of times we have a female and we wanna add size to the female. Well, or vice versa. And we think we're adding size by adding this dog in. And the truth of the matter is, is that if your female has smaller genes, and I'm just using this as an example, but if your female has smaller genes and the male has a pedigree that says, you know, uh, smaller genetics behind them, you're probably going to end up with a whole bunch of damn midgets. You know, you're going to find, you're going to get a very, very, very small, shortened stature type of, uh, type of breeding. What's going on? And you have to uh, ride or die. You know, you have yeah, research is everything. I see too many people that at the very end of, you know, the dog's about to be bred and the first thing they want to do, I'm looking for a stud. Let's show me what you got. So you waited till your bitch started breed, uh, bleeding. Then you decided that you wanted a stud or you're trying to find a stud. Now you're breeding off of price. You're breeding off of the hype. You know, how fast will I be able to sell my puppies? You know, uh, all these different factors that doesn't matter i'm going to tell you the truth when it comes to this if you do the breeding and you're basing it off of quality and you do proper research and everything you know you're going to make some good dogs and your dogs will help you sell anyway oh yeah i'll be i'm actually home for uh for a day today so yeah i'll be free man just hit me up i'm actually sitting outside the gym right now we'll get this shit out the way then you know <clears throat> i'll be free but um <laughs> Pitbull Bell, you say, yeah, I'm, <clears throat> y'all excuse me, but uh, a lot of people do it. A lot of people do the breeding specifically just to tell, uh, to tell pup, I mean, to sell puppies instead of actually to put together nice puppies. If you putting together nice dogs, everything else will work its way out. It amazes me to see people, how, how unprepared people are to do a breeding. I mean, things happened recently. I just had things happen with uh, a breeding that I was doing with somebody. And it is what it is. But if you're prepared, you know, maybe you do have a backup stud that brings you the same things that this other stud does. But you have to have a vision when you're breeding. So many people are just all over the board. You know, I'm not going to bring any dogs up, but I see a lot of dogs that are being bred that just flat out don't produce. You know, their owners are marketing uh, people that market, 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 market. So the people are like, oh, I'm going to do a breeding with him because you know i know i'll be able to sell my puppies and then you cry when you have a badass litter and you turn around and you know people see that people see that your dogs that you have look like shit. you know i think the biggest claim to fame that 
we've ever had a Hall of Fame is probably the Hall of Fame Bullies page. Because the best part about the Hall of Fame Bullies page is that no, we did not uh, do every breeding on that page, but we approved every breeding on that page. Anything that you've seen off of our dogs, we've approved those breedings directly off our dogs, not grandkids and stuff like that. We don't control that. But it's proud that, you know, you can have a page with damn near pushing, I think damn near 100, I mean, well, no, it's about 200,000 now. And people really, really love the dogs, and I get a lot of good interaction on the page. And it's just because every time even I look at somebody and I tell, I mean, I look at a dog and I tell y'all, hey, send it in and let me approve it. I'm approving it for a reason. What's going on, American Bully Mini? You know, it, I'm approving this. I'm approving this breeding for a reason. The reason why I'm approving the breeding is because of experience, looking at the pedigrees, knowing what the dogs behind it throw or didn't throw, and knowing if it'll it'll go with my blood. The same reason why I don't approve a lot of breedings, you know. And trust me, at times, especially at times like now, I could use the money, but I will not approve any and everything to go to my studs because we're talking about legacy here. When you when you pushing a stud. You know what I mean? You pushing his legacy. You're like the manager of his career. So every screwed up litter that he has, that's your fault, you know? And I, you know, I take pride in making sure that my boys are out here with a great reputation. Denzel is Denzel, you know? He's, in my opinion, he ranks right up there at the top with producers of all time, you know? And uh, Mandela is starting off good, you know, with, with his career of uh, producing. <clears throat> so many people are in a rush to put out a litter or sell a stud that there is no proper investigation. Some of y'all got nice looking bitches and I see the bitch, but I look back on the pedigree and I see dogs that I remember that the blood just didn't click. You know, especially when you talk about the Edge family, which I'm more adept with. The Edge family is certain bloods where I've told y'all previously that, you know, they're all interchangeable for the most part. That's true, but you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work, you know, certain. And what, when I say it doesn't work, what it is with a lot of edge combinations is if you do the wrong edge combination, you'll get you a pit bull. What's going on, Duramax? That, that's all. You get you a pit bull and it'll go back to the original characteristics that it was supposed to be, you know, and that's uh, not what we're going for. But understanding which bloods click, you know, understanding that the Rock and Ruby bloods, how that works, or understanding how the Suarez Bull stuff work, you know. When I do Suarez Bull, I try to do basically what's considered an outcross, you know, because it's so tightly bred Cairo. I don't want to line, I don't want to line breed Cairo anymore. I find something else to make that blood interact and grow because it'll keep the structure. But typically with the Suarez uh, with the, or Paco blood, whatever y'all want to call it, if you line breed it, if you continue to line breed it, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And the same thing with Remy. If you look at Remy's career, throughout Remy's career, some of his best breedings were actually to uh, like Grey Line and Gotti Line dogs. He was a dog that was very, very evenly bred and very well bred, but it was something about when you put him to some of the, the bigger Grey Line, Gotti Line dogs, Remy would just throw some incredible dogs. I think Pokemon is a good example of that. I think I'm pretty sure he's got a decent amount of the Gotti line blood on his side. What's going on, real tall dog man? Y'all screen names is crazy. <laughs> but you know, <clears throat> that's the key. Like I see too many people breeding blindly. Like sometimes it'll take me forever to get a breeding done just because I'm determined to get this one type of breeding done because I know what the results are. You know, the results are gonna be you know, phenomenal. The breedings that I'm doing now, I'm very confident that these dogs will be better than the dogs that I had before. And it's just off of experience and studying them, you know, studying what's coming through the door. And I really hate the fact that, uh, you know, <laughs> Pitbull Bell said that eight times Remy to Paco, straight Pitbull. Yeah, because that's lion breeding. Remy and Paco are bred a lot alike. You know, I've always found that outcrosses with Remy and Paco do a lot more justice than running them directly back into there. Now, inside the Edge family, if I was going to run some Remy or Paco, I would run it to the Excalibur stuff because the Excalibur stuff is like a variant off of that, and it can, it can continue to put size on them and bulliness, you know. So that that's a good blood to mix them with in the Edge family. But 
It's, it's, man, you have to, I mean, you putting all this work into your breedings, you have to take the time to do the little research, man, to figure out what you have going on there. And really, every breeding that you do, like say for instance, right now, you know, we're in the process of doing the, uh, the Denzel to uh, Molly, the Denzel to Molly breeding, where that's a heavy Remy breeding. Going back to the uh, going back to the Paco and um, Halley stuff, which Halley has got a lot of uh, gray line blood in her or Gotti line, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> now, when doing this breeding, I'm very, 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 very confident of breeding because of the way the bloods mesh. But knowing what I'm going to keep off of that, I'm already prepared to take those, take a, a male or a female, and breed them to uh, the breeding that I'm having off of. Uh, Castro's daughter, Honey, to Pumba. You know, Pumba brings you the Excalibur blood, then you had a Manu blood, then you have Gav blood there, and of course you had a Paco and the Halley blood there. So meshing those and bringing in that, uh, that strong Remy blood and already having the gray line and the Paco and the Halley on one side and bringing it in with the Manu blood, which is the same variant. Oh God, here come a Ravens fan. Man, y'all just, y'all man, y'all like herpes. I just can't get rid of y'all. <laughs> just can't get rid of y'all like some herpes or some shit <laughs> damn ravens fans you see it cleveland browns nation but uh that's my dude there <clears throat> but i tell you you know it has to be <laughs> i got him man we have to do research on these breedings it's like i know everyone wants to say well i'm a hobby breeder but even a hobby breeder is there to make a better dog so researching it properly is going to help you out. You have to learn how to mesh certain bloods. You have to look at the characteristics and understand how characteristics compound. You know, if I say if you're looking back to the first three, four generations of these dogs' pedigrees, and I say go go to your go to your puppy's pedigree. You know, go back four generations. If you're going back four generations on your puppy's pedigree and you can start seeing the same flaws from the same dogs, you know, and you as you evaluate each dog, okay, this one didn't have the strongest rear. This one didn't have the strongest rear. This one didn't have the strongest rear. Now you got three dogs in there that didn't have the strongest rear. Your chances are going to be greatly elevated that you are going to have some kind of rear end problems. You know, same thing goes with, uh, you know, bad feet or whatever or whatever you do. You know, you have to do the studying and the research to let these pedigrees do the breeding for you. I don't care how nice the specimen is in front of you. It's going to be some kind of issues behind that pedigree that you need to map these out and see what your percentages is. Because as, uh, as any flaw, not even flaw, but even sometimes good genes, as it's compounded into the DNA structure, it is a higher chance. And it can come back like, wildfire i know many of y'all have seen where two nice dogs you know what i mean oh mahomes is a bad boy i ain't got nothing bad to say about pat mahomes them sidearm throws is whew, love it you know i love baker mayfield though I'm, I'm a mayfield guy you know i hope he have a breakthrough year like that but <laughs> but back back to y'all know i talk football all day but you know the, the truth of the matter is is we've seen a lot of good dogs where you see the mom is very well structured, the dad is very well structured. Well, what, what happens is, and you wonder how their litter comes up screwed up, is because we ignore things that were behind in the pedigree. And what you'll see a lot of times is this, is that, uh, oh, shit, Larry. <laughs> Bernie owes us all a couple dollars. <laughs> oh, man, thanks, Bugs, thanks. But, um... What you you know what we what we tend to see is we tend to well, Jackson a bad boy. The league is full of young quarterbacks. We got to do it. We got to do a football live, you know. But uh, the, you know, well, if you starting off with no pedigree, that's gonna make it real hard for you to do anything. Because I'm being honest, you know, ancestry is everything. I mean, everything. And. Uh, if you can't if you can't lock in you know where your dogs come from it's going to be hard to tell where you're going you know it's going to take a lot of experimental breeding it's going to take a lot of building a chart to understand how your dogs produce you know i've already you know even like with a dog like mandela that i haven't bred a lot i know what to stay away from with, for, with mandela you know bistro's mother was more of a pit bull type of girl so i, I stay away from really really terrier females People like, you know, I've had that a lot, you know, and, 
he's so bully. He could he could make her more bully and this, that, and the other. And I mean, to a certain extent, maybe that's true if she has a bully pedigree. But if her pedigree is very terrier, and I breed her to Mandela, it, you know, with his grandmother being very terrier in my eyes, they're gonna they're gonna throw some terrier dogs. I mean, I don't, I do, vid these videos, this station has never been about, uh, a lot of people ask that. It's never, the, the station has been about talking about dogs. It's not like a photo gallery. That's why we don't just go out and videotape. That's sort of for other kennels, you know. If people want to see the dogs, I, I post the dogs and I post videos and pictures and all that on the uh, Facebook page, Hall of Fame Bullies. But this page has never been, we, we all, on this page, we more so talk dogs. We talk dog information. The State of the Union address is about what's wrong with the community, how we can get better. It's never been a thing about just posting up pictures of dogs. I think, not even to be a smart ass, but I think if one thing is for, for certain, you can find pictures of Denzel. <laughs> you can find video of Denzel because it, it's a lot of it posted in Mandela. But on this page, I, uh, I told somebody last week, now that we got a new camera, I'll probably put up more and more pictures of it. But it's always been, this page has all, always been more about bully rants. I think as time has went along, you know, of course, with me having a kennel and having dogs, we talk about my dog sometimes. But when it was actually first originated on this page, it was uh, the D-line bully rants. It wasn't even really supposed to be just me. Over time, no one else did video, so it ended up being just me. <laughs> we need to get to Dayton, man. I was just in Canton. Uh, had a good time in Canton, man. Had a damn good time in, in Canton. Uh, Dayton, somebody was supposed to be throwing a show there, and right now my brain is all the way dead. But we're going we gonna to have to... <laughs> Vinny Testaverne is the GOAT. And maybe in his own house. But... Uh, <laughs> The, we're going to actually be in Dayton. We're actually going to be in Columbus and Canton. You know, uh, so those are all my Ohio cities. Uh, actually, this morning I'm talking to the uh, Stark County Fairgrounds about setting up four dates for the Canton area, spaced out over, you know, every every couple months, six weeks to eight weeks. So that, that, that'll that be a jump off there. If we can find a good play, Larry just keep on naming all these damn terrible Browns quarterbacks that didn't win us nothing. <sighs> yeah, Brian Sight. Lou Grosser was the only one that won the damn title. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, uh, a lot of, uh, well, I'll tell you the truth that what is, we have standards on our pages, but a lot of the, uh, I use Born in Dayton, and all these Buckeyes on here. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's a good life. Uh, the tank pups are huge, man. The tank pups are huge. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I've never been an XL person, so I'm watching them. And uh, I don't want to jump the gun, but, you know, that's one of the things I'm known for is having an eye for puppies. And the male that I have, what's going on, Brother Keith? The male that I have, uh, Creed, is something, is something, uh, special he is i'm looking at his confirmation he's very big boy they turned 13 weeks i think yesterday or something but you know he's like 42 pounds big very thick dog but he's very pretty he's got very good structure you know i think he's going to be one of those 160 pound maybe 170 pound dogs his dad is like 180 pounds at 19 months but he, he's he's nice man and you know i i'm i'm a stickler for confirmation and uh and size if i'm gonna do it you know but i sort of like the dog man you know uh maybe who knows maybe i'll have a couple xl breedings in the future i do like i've always liked big ass uh big ass dogs man i miss the the thing about mandela i'm with uh i seen many so if you're talking about that waiting like uh like the first couple have come in now i'm just waiting on those two so we can cut them open we're not even gonna play around we're gonna cut them bitches open and get it done Oh, what's that in my hand? It's just a stress ball. Yeah, it's this little heart thing. Just squeeze the hell out of it. So yeah, I keep, I do that. If y'all notice, like uh, my sister Belinda be on here. And uh, yeah, that's all it is, is a stress ball. Uh, 
they they be laughing at me sometimes and telling me to stop it because my legs get going and I just so this ball actually helps me not bounce my legs around. Man, I tell you what, the Dobermans is doing nice too. Really, all my dogs is doing pretty good. It's, it's been a, it's been a good time. I'm looking forward to getting back to breeding. You know, I know I'm gonna be out here at a ton of shows this year. Shows is like, uh, you know. It's really loaded up, and I, I I did a little thing last night to tell everybody I appreciate it because I think one of the things with the TBKC that was funny is, like, we were just getting started. Like, literally every other registry is, like, three, four years old. We're not even at a year yet. We still got a few months to go before we're a year. And people, like, just kept on putting us on this... Uh, on this crazy ass thing of like oh they got to be perfect with everything and we are striving to make things a lot better and now that the stuff is finally coming together i think people are going to be happy with all the things that we have to offer but it took time you know and i know you know complaining is the favorite thing to do so you know we had to deal with that but now our show scene is good um that's what I'm doing after this is talking to everybody about these shows and how we're going to get them together. Texas, Florida, the East Coast, and the Midwest are loaded and loaded up there. Uh, I got some work to do on the West Coast. Uh, I got some friends out there. I want to at least get to the West Coast four or five times this year, you know, get to Cali, maybe Vegas. Uh, you know, I know Colorado is on the agenda. I have to get back with my guy out there and see what's going on. You know, I know he, he had did some work but we got to get it together and now uh, we even talked about utah with a friend of mine so you know we're gonna we're gonna make it i just want to make sure that everything is right that's why i took a pause but you know back to the, what we were saying about the dogs are we gonna have some fun in texas texas is realistically will be having a show like not even once a month and some in some cases in the same month because the state is so big you'll have two and three shows spread out you know we already have our one texas host and uh you know it's time now the win is the big question and that's why i keep saying i have to make these calls i was i was like holding back dates since and, and a lot of these deposits have been made but my big thing was i didn't want to uh oh yeah dave gonna be dave but i didn't want to uh start any more shows until we had everything right with the paperwork and that we could print it out and even print them out at shows so people didn't have to wait and so we uh, we did that. On the East Coast, I already know we have the, uh, what's that, Salem County Fairgrounds. We'll be having like five shows there. They'll be starting in March, and they'll be basically periodically every six weeks. We're heading up. I just talked to my guy, Rico, and uh, we'll be headed up to the Massachusetts area. And we'll be basically doing like a barbecue circuit there with a lot of weight pool uh, things. So you, in Massachusetts, you'll probably see us four to five times. I still have my brother Danny up in Rhode Island, and uh, we might get one more show in uh, Rhode I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to get uh, one more show up in, in Rhode Island. Uh, <clears throat> Pennsylvania. We're working on Pennsylvania right now. Um, I got my homie Alvy up in uh, New York, so whenever he's settled in, we'll be somewhere in, in not the city, but New York, the state. You know, everybody like, ah, oh, I know y'all had y'all beef. That's not New York. <laughs> it is New York. <laughs> but uh, I don't know about Connecticut yet. I'm pretty sure. We have so many people there. One of our judges are going to be throwing a lot of shows, and we have a lot of people pulling. So I, I think the whole East Coast is pretty much set. You know, I got my guy, Norrell. He's got a couple places in uh, North Carolina that he's ready right now. And uh, we got uh, Pitbull Bell there in South Carolina, and we're gonna make South Carolina happen, no problem. I have to, I'm working on Georgia. Uh, that's on me, but I'm working on Georgia. It will happen. We will get Perry, Atlanta type of thing, you know. Louisiana, I have to thank my friends. <laughs> Louisiana will be really, really good. Uh, actually have four different locations in Louisiana and the reason why it's going to be so many shows is we want to do them as like circuits we want to get to the same areas on a regular basis so people can start to come out and we can build some continuity we don't want to be there for one show then y'all don't see us for eight or nine months then we come back for another show we want to do whether it's a show or a barbecue we want people to get in the habit of coming out and sometimes just talking a little bit Toronto we do have a TBKC Toronto I mean 
mean, uh, Canada. So I'm pretty sure we'll be there. Everything was just sort of on the freeze as we waited for certain things to get cleared up. But I know for a fact we'll be in, uh, we'll be in Canada at least twice was our goal. Uh, Jamaica will ha still have three three to four shows this year. Um, you know, we're moving, man. Uh, Brazil. I got uh, a couple cats down there who's putting it together. Um, uh, what was the cities? Uh, Medellin and uh, Bogota. Uh, oh, Missouri. That's easy. Yeah, we'll be in Missouri. Uh, I just left Missouri, but uh, we, they're, they're, what it looks like is it's, it's quite possible that uh, you know a friend of mine, the owner of the tank, he had uh, already talked about throwing a major, like big time uh, barbecue type thing on, on his property out there because he, he has a huge property and you know he, he wanted to do some things for the community so it's a good it's a good possibility we'll be in Missouri for that one and uh, you know helping him out so it's all you know it's 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 a process you know it's been a hard process but it's coming along uh, new shirts and all that shit are coming and you know we're gonna get it going man hey thanks bugs I, I really do appreciate y'all support I think the one thing that y'all gonna find out as these things go on is that it's real dog shit here. You know, it's not it's not the politics. We are going to judge the dogs the way the dogs are supposed to be judged. The uh, standards, y'all notice that we're, we're going to do the standard updates. You know, uh, John's been working hard. I've been getting at it. I'm going to make sure that me and John have a good conversation today. We're going to read, you know, not the standards aren't changing a lot. But what we have to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to sit down with some of the XL guys and really, really lock in the XL standard and see what the variation is between the XL and the double XL. Because we are going to have some monster monster XL shows you know uh, the XL community is gigantic right now uh, and looking for a home and we're gonna give them that home and really 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 push the uh, XL community I got some cool shit that we're gonna do with that but I mean everybody talks a lot of shit with them XLs like their dog weighs this much my dog's head is this big and that's all fine we, we gonna have booths where you can get the real measurements myotape them put them on a scale in front of everybody but we also have to understand with the XL dogs is that let's not forget confirmation and let's not forget that the dog is supposed to look like a bully. And uh, in a lot of situations I've noticed with the XLs that some of the XLs really, really look too terrierish. And we're going to have to do, we're going to have to make a change is that if these are, if these are, if these are bullies, they need to look like bullies. What's going on Bronx? <clears throat> they need, you know, they really, they really need to look like bullies. Hey, much love, Larry. I got to go next week. But, you know, um, I missed that last message. But, yeah, anybody with the XL, you know, uh, any information, any input you have, we open to it. Uh, uh, TBKCDogs at Gmail. We're very much open to uh, doing whatever we got to do to make sure that we do this thing right. But, you know, big year is upon us. Finally made it to February, so now it's time to start getting these papers together and printing out paperwork and shipping out papers and all this good stuff and really, really getting everything on track. Uh, I'll make an announcement where we're going to start taking new registrations. It'll probably be within the next two weeks. And now it's time to pump them out and have some fun, y'all. You know, these shows should be good. The weather is hopefully starting to break after being 50 below last week. But, it, you know, it's time to get it in. But, you know, in closing, like I told y'all, man, and, you know, we always get on the many of subjects. If you're going to do your breedings, man, do your research. I keep telling y'all that breeding dogs is not that hard, but it does take, like anything else in life, a little bit of effort and a little bit of time to find out exactly how you're doing it, you know. Uh, you know, the, the, the American Bully is a nice dog, you know, but it's a misunderstood dog because we have so many bad breeders. And by you know, breeding for all the aspects of this dog, the dog will get better. The American Bully, I just seen a comment about uh, getting as much information before bringing it in your home. The true American Bully is a very stable dog. You know, when you get an American Bully, this shouldn't be a dog that has big problems with people, maybe little problems with some other animals because you have to understand its origins of being a pit bull. But the thing that we really truly have to understand about these dogs is that they are, you know, they, they are best suited as pets, you know? That's what they do. They are best suited as pets. Legendary, but I got you, I got you. 
Um, they are best suited as pets. They're not, you know, some of them still have drive where you can go hunting with them and different stuff like that, but they're not really built for that. Throughout the years, most of the uh, true drive and aggression has been taken out of the dog, you know. But, you know, the, the, the key to understanding this breed is to understand its origins and what it's supposed to be. The dog is never supposed to be looked at as you know a cur it's not scared of other animals and all that and like i said you might see a little aggression towards other animals sometimes because it, 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 its origins is a pit bull but uh, i i've made many a post about this and i'll tell you this again you know if you even are looking into into buying a dog you know make sure that this breeder answers every question that you have about how the parents act what are their temperaments you know because some of us are bringing the dogs into the house with kids and around family and different things like that temperament is a must the america I, i'm going to do a video later where it talks about why are they considered companion dogs and this that and the other i'm going to be honest with you the companion thing started a long time ago to help us get around some bsl laws that that's it do I think they fall into the category? Yeah, I think they do. But originally the reason why we went there was that, you know, it helped us get around a lot of confusion with insurance companies, BSL laws, you know, we didn't want them registered. I mean, looked at as working dogs or any of that type of stuff, not even a terrier. You didn't want any of that because those dogs were already starting to pick up a reputation. So companion dog was just nice, very nice, their companions, you know, and that made it a lot easier with some of these laws to show that these dogs, yeah, Denzel's still alive and kicking and doing his thing. Yeah, he's, uh, I just actually put him up before I came here. Yeah, he's still doing his thing, man. He, he's getting older, but he, he's actually still in really good shape. I'm sort of happy with where he's at right now. Yeah, but, uh, hey, man, I thank all of y'all. Uh, this has been an adventure. <laughs> But uh, we, we get into that point now where it's time to open these doors and really get things going. And uh, we'll have a lot of seminars. I got to get on the phone with my dude, Sean from True Tank today to see what he got going on. He, he's going to be one of our speakers at a lot of different events. You know, uh, the, Denzel is pretty much Razor's Edge bloodline for the most part. Uh, his mother has some gray line, you know, which I think a lot of these dogs are like that. Hey, much love. You know, that'd be a good surprise. But you know, uh, I think also, you know, in, in signing off, if you are looking into buying a dog, man, put it all on the breeder. The breeder should be willing to talk to you, <coughs> excuse me, about every aspect. How these dogs behave, you know, how his dogs behave. They should, they should do the whole thing. What's going on, Luke? They should keep, they should do the whole thing, man. They should never be able, it shouldn't be any secrets about the parents or any of that. They should be wide open to questions. Uh, the health, how long did the grandparents live? How old are the parents? You know, have they had any kind of abnormalities in the health? You know, uh, if, if you can, if you had the opportunity, get out there and check out the dog's temperament. Is it an unstable dog? Is it a very friendly dog? All these things matter, man, because you bringing this dog into your home. You know, once you get them there, you know, it's your responsibility and hopefully you're not kicking it out, you know what I'm saying, in the damn streets. <laughs> and it ends up at the uh, dog pound or something. So we have to be reasonable as uh, responsible as buyers and everything, you know. I love Hurricane Blood. I love what those guys doing and what they stand for. Uh, Y'all rarely hear me say that about a lot of breeders, but uh, I, like, I like what Hurricane stands for. They, you know, they really, really seem to push the breed in the right way. And anybody who's doing that, I got a lot of love for them, man. But, hey, until next time, I'll give you all some announcements on uh, the radio show and everything. Uh, I think it's safe to say we'll be back up this weekend. And uh, y'all going to have to start tuning in to that radio show. It, it, we get it in on that show. And, I, and, then, and if we back Sunday, I'm going to make sure that my man Tori G get on there and talk crazy, you know. I'm gonna tell you, okay, <laughs> I was getting off, but don't listen to none of these idiots on the, on the YouTube talking about these dogs as exhibition dogs and all this stuff. What you have is you have people who are trying to change the breed. It's just that simple. People are trying to change this breed to be what they want it to be. They wanna put the dogs on tables. They wanna do all this weird stuff. They wanna drag them in wagons to try to get money out of your pocket. 
Don't ever worry about what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll post the link for the uh, radio show, by the way, y'all. I'll post it because they might give us a new link since everything is sort of restarting. But, you know, don't don't let these people make you believe that these dogs are supposed to be the way that some of them are presenting. These dogs are supposed to be able to run around, move and live a normal life, not just st standing them on tables. And come on, man. You don't just want to stand a dog on a damn table and the dog can't do anything. This is not what we're here for. This is not what the breed should be. You know, people are changing the breed to fit their own insufficiencies and their inabilities, you know, to uh, raise a proper dog. So y'all, please don't fall for that. Our, our dogs are not supposed to limp around, have breathing problems or any of that. These dogs are supposed to be functional, fast moving. Uh, you know, everybody keep telling me to get some video. I'm gonna get some video and hopefully Mandela get out there and run. Because I'm gonna, the, the truth of the matter is Mandela, even at his size and everything, you know, he gets out there, he runs around, plays around. You know, he's out there with the puppies running. He's out there with the Dobermans running. And I don't never have to worry about going out there and pouring water on him to keep him warm and all that type, I mean, cool and all that type of shit. I'm gonna be honest with y'all and it might sound harsh. If I ever have to take special care of any dog that can't live in basic weather conditions, then I, I they won't get bread. I'm not gonna say I'll put him down immediately, but the dog will not get it will not get bread. I'm not passing on bad genetics to my uh, breeding stock because I didn't do my job as far as making a better dog. But hey, until next time, I guess it's time for me to make a better me and get my ass in this gym. Hey, man, as I always tell y'all, y'all pick up that phone and call somebody. Call grandma, call mama, tell them. Hey, no no wet capes at all. <laughs> but tell your grandmother, your grandfather, or just maybe a friend that you ain't heard from in a long time. Let them know you love them, man, because life is short. We lose people daily. and You, you know, we don't want to live with no regrets. And the biggest regret you ever have is not loving the people who you, uh, love you, you know. But until next time, God bless. I will holler at y'all later.